بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أستقى الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد <coughs> So السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Brothers uh, We arrived to this section um, of uh, the book The Three Fundamental Principles um, and uh, we arrived here at this section um, where the Sheikh says uh, and describes what Al-Islam and what Al-Iman and what Al-Ihsan mean and um, this is what we'll be discussing today and also the uh, various types of Ibadah as well the various types of worship as well inshallah in this lesson uh, so uh, let's continue where we left off so the Sheikh he said he says Qawluhu rahimahullah مثل الإسلام والإيمان والإحسان هذه الأنواع الثلاثة أعظم أنواع الإبادات الإسلام والإيمان والإحسان وسيأتي شرحها في كلام الشيخ رحمه الله في في الأصل الثاني في الأصل في الأصل الثاني وذكرها هنا لأنها من أنواع الإبادة فالإسلام بأركانه الخمسة الشهادتان وإقام الصلاة وإيتاء الزكاة وصوم رمضان وحج وحج بيت الله الحرام هذه كلها عبادات مالية وبدنية وكذلك الإيمان بأركانه الستة وهو من أعمال القلوب الإيمان بالله وملائكته وكتبه ورسله واليوم الآخر والإيمان بالقدر خيره وشره so if you remember last week when the Sheikh was saying uh, was discussing and explaining to us about the types of ibadah so you have the ibadah the worship that's linked to your body and the actions that you do with your body and then you have the ibadah that's within the heart as well so if you remember what we discussed and this is following on now from there so then the Sheikh he says so like uh, the, the speech of uh, uh, the original author he says may Allah have mercy upon him he says uh, like what he said, like Al-Islam and Al-Iman and Al-Ihsan. And then the Shaykh, he says, they, these are the three ta- most greatest types of Ibadah. The, they are the three most greatest types of Ibadah. And then the Shaykh, he says, Al-Islam and Iman and Ihsan. And he says, um, the explanation of these in more detail will come by way of uh, uh, the author's um, uh, explanation and speech uh, in the second um, chapter or second section where he says Allah Salathani well the Shaykh will come to it anyway he's mentioned it then he says he mentioned here and he's, he's mentioned is the only reason why he's mentioned it here without further explaining in more detail is because it's from the types of worship and that's what we're talking about right now so he says uh, Al-Islam by way of its five pillars the five pillars of Islam, uh, the two testimonies of faith, uh, establishing the five daily prayers, um, giving the obligatory charity, the zakat, fasting the month of Ramadan, and making hajj to Allah's house. Uh, so making hajj. The Sheikh says, these are, uh, the uh, all of these are worship, worship or types of worship that are, um, uh, worship that you strive with your wealth as well as your actually your own self your body as well as as mentioned uh, in last week's lesson was described in detail so then the sheikh he says and likewise and unlike that uh, al iman iman by uh, by way of its pillars as well is iman the six pillars of iman which we did in a previous book if you remember some of the brothers remember they were there during that, those lessons in that book when the Sheikh explained it, which we were reading and uh, translating. So the six pillars of Iman, um, and these are the uh, are to do with the actions of the heart. 
So the Sheikh says, for example, Al Iman. So having Iman, uh, having faith in Allah, Al Iman Billah, and His angels and His books that He's revealed, and His messengers that He sent, uh, and the last day, and having Iman or belief uh, in the predestination, the Qadr of Allah, the good of it and the bad of it. The Sheikh says this is the uh, worship of, that's related to the heart. So then the Sheikh continues and he says, كَذَلِكَ الْإِحْسَانِ وَهُوَ رُكْنٌ وَاحِدٌ وَهُوَ أَن تَعْبُدَ اللَّهَ كَأَنَّكَ تَرَاهُ فَإِن لَمْ تَكُنْ تَرَاهُ فَإِنَّهُ يَرَاكَ هَذَا أَعْلَى أَنْوَاءِ الْإِبَادَةِ لِأَنَّ الْإِحْسَانِ هُوَ أَعْلَى أَنْوَاءِ الْإِبَادَةِ وَهَذِهِ تُسَمَّى مَرَاتِبْ الدين لأن, مجم... لأن مجموعها هو الدين لأن جبريل لما سأل النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بحضرة أصحابه وأجا... وأجابه النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم عن الإسلام والإيمان والإحسان قال هذا جبريل أتاكم يؤلمكم أمر دينكم فسمي هذه ثلاثة الدين So let's just uh, stop there and take a pause we translate it, inshallah. So then the Shaykh says, likewise, Al-Ihsan. Al-Ihsan, he says, Al-Ihsan, it is, it has one pillar. It is one pillar and it has one pillar. And he says, it is that you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if you see him, but surely you don't see him. You don't see him, but he sees you. So that's Ihsan. So whenever you are worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by way of different types of worship as the Shaykh has given some examples in uh, uh, in last week's lesson and today's lesson so far then you have that you have the approach that's ihsan that that when you're carrying out the act of worship Allah is watching you Allah sees you Allah is knowledgeable of what you're doing but even though uh, and you should carry out that task as if you could see Allah but even though you can't he surely sees you so yeah, you're in that frame of mind and that's Ihsan. And the Shaykh says that that is the top level of, of worship. That's the very top level that you can reach. Yeah. So then the Shaykh, he says, uh, and he says that these, what we discuss now, they've, they've been named or they're called the levels of the deen, the maratib of the deen. Because he says that all of them, they are the deen. All of these, al-Islam, wal-Iman, wal-Ihsan, they, they they encompass the whole deen that is our religion based on those principles yeah and then the shaykh says and he gives an explanation as well further explanation he says because jibreel alayhi salam when he asked the prophet sallallahu alayhi salam in the uh, famous hadith is called the hadith of jibreel yeah um uh, and that's this hadith that the shaykh is mentioning referring to when jibreel alayhi salam uh, he came in the form of a man and he sat knee to knee with the Prophet Sallallahu and he asked the affairs of the deen, those three affairs that we're talking about now, Al-Islam, Wal-Iman, Wal-Ihsan. And the Shaykh, he says, and, and, and the Sahaba, the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu were also present. And the Prophet Sallallahu uh, answered uh, Jibreel Alayhi uh, Salaam uh, with regards to his questions about Al-Islam and Al-Iman and Al-Ihsan. And he said, then the Prophet ﷺ at the end of that long hadith, he says, he says that this is Jibreel. He has he came to teach you the affairs of your deen, the affair of your deen, the affairs of your deen. So then the Shaykh says, so that's why these three, Al Islam, um, Al Iman, and Al Ihsan, they are called the deen. They are they are, they are the deen. So yeah, uh, these three they they were called the deen. They were named that because of. Because of, because of what's mentioned earlier, yeah, what the Sheikh had told us, Alhamdulillah. So then um, the Sheikh moves on to uh, a, a new uh, section following on from where we left off here. And the Sheikh he says, Addu'au aqsamuhu wa daliluhu. So we're going to go into that, inshallah, as, as we read through. So we're going to go through the dua, its, a, its uh, types, and the evidence for those types. When the Sheikh mentions the types, he's going to give evidence for that as well. So then um, the uh, uh, the um, subsection of this uh, 
um, section here is that the Shaykh says وَمِنْهُ الدُّعَاءُ وَالْخَوْفُ وَالرَّجَاءُ وَالتَّوَكَّلُ وَالرَّغْبَةُ وَالرَّهْبَةُ وَالْخُشُوءُ وَالْإِنَابَةُ وَالْإِسْتِعَانَةُ وَالْإِسْتِعَادَةُ وَالذَّبْحُ وَالنَّذَرُ وَغَيْرُ ذَلِكَ مِنْ أَنْوَاعِ الْإِبَادَةِ الَّتِي أَمَرَ اللَّهُ بِهَا كُلُّهَا لِلَّهِ تَعَالَى So then the Shaykh mentions some uh, types of uh, worship which we also mentioned last week as well. So for example, making dua, supplication, and having fear, and having hope, and having trust, and desiring to do something. For example, carrying out an action. Also, staying away from a, a wrong action and having that fear of not doing that wrong and staying away from it. And, uh, uh, you know, having that tranquility as well, al-khushu, tranquility while you're worshipping, and inaba, al-isti'ana, so seeking aid from Allah, seeking forgiveness, seeking help from Allah, um, sacrificing uh, for Allah's sake, um, making oaths, and other than that, from the types of worship that the Shaykh has mentioned here, that Allah has commanded us with all of it, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only, nobody else, nobody takes a share in the worship, the worship, all of it is for Allah alone, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, so then the shaykh, he says, قوله ومنه الدعاء أي ومن أنواع الإبادة الدعاء بدأ به لأنه أعظم أعظم أنواع الإبادة أعظم أنواع الإبادة So then the shaykh, he says, and the original author speech, she says, and from the types of worship is a dua, i.e. from the types of worship is dua. So it's, from, it's a type of worship. Dua is a type of worship. Supplication and supplicating is a type of worship. And the Shaykh mentions here that he began with this, mentioning this, a, a dua, because it is the greatest from the types of worship. It is the greatest type of worship, as we'll, inshallah, learn. And the Shaykh, he says, what du'a'u ala qismain. He says that a dua supplication is of two types. It has two categories. So he goes on to explain. He says, Dua'u ibadatin wa dua'u mas'alatin. So he says, supplication with regards to worship and a supplication uh, which is asking. So what does that mean? He says, he starts off with the first one. He says, Dua'u al-ibadah. Dua'u al-ibadati. Huwa thana'u ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kama fi awwal al-fatiha. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين هذا كله دعاء إبادة اهدنا الصراط المستقيم إلى آخر سورة هذا دعاء مسألة So the Shaykh explains, he gives us examples as well with evidence he says He says, so what is dua al-ibadah? What's the supplication of, of, of ibadah? A worship, he says It is um, praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we do in in the first parts of Surah Al-Fatiha, as we read those ayahs, from Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, all the way to Iyaka Na'bud wa Iyaka Nasta'een. This is, this is Dua Libada. And then the latter parts of Surah Al-Fatiha, from Ihdina Sirat Al-Mustaqeem to the end, this is what's called Dua Al-Mas'ala, that you're asking. So you have Dua of Ibada where you praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yeah, etc. Like that, you, um, you, um, you praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the first type of dua. The second type of dua is where you ask mas'ala, where you ask, and that is, for example, where in Surah Al-Fatiha, where the Shaykh has given his evidence, says, Ihdina Salat al-Mustaqeem, you know, guide us to the straight path. Gu gu guide us to the straight path. Um, and towards the end, or, 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 and the rest of the ayahs are follow on to the end. Uh, these these are supplications that we're asking Allah for something. So that's the second type of supplication where we ask Allah subhanahu, uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala for something. So then the Shaykh says, وَدُوَاءُ مَسْأَلَى He says, هُوَ تَلَبُوا شَيْءٍ مِنَ اللَّهِ أَزَّ وَجَلْ كَتَلَبِ الْهِدَايَةِ وَتَلَبَ الرِّزْقِ وَتَلَبَ الْعِلْمِ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَتَلَبَ التَّوْفِيقِ وَدَلِيلُ قَوْ ودليل قوله تعالى وأن المساجد لله فلا تدعو ما الله أحدا. So then the Sheikh he says he, he breaks down further the supplication where we ask Allah for something. So he says this is 
where you request a thing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you ask subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as, uh, for uh, something, whether that is uh, asking for guidance, asking for sustenance, uh, asking for knowledge from Allah, asking for success, and other than that, what people ask for, yeah? So that's just some examples just to help us understand what we're talking about, inshallah. So then the Shaykh, he says, well, what's the evidence for that? He says that the evidence, the dalil, but that is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we just read there from Surah Al-Jinn, verse 18. And if we look at the translation, inshallah, so let's go to the translation of Surah Al-Jinn. And the mosques are for Allah alone. So invoke not anyone along with Allah. So that's the evidence for what we mentioned, what the Shaykh mentioned. And then the Shaykh will go on to explain now, um, uh, what does Al-Masajid mean? And so he's going to explain this to us fully so we know what it means, inshallah. So then the Shaykh, he says, Al-Masajid. And he says, Tutlaqu wa yuradu biha amakin sujood wal biqa alati yusalla fiha. Wa hiya ahabb al biqa ila al... Wa hiya ahabb al biqa ila Allah yazza wa jal qad jaa al tarayib fi banaiha وَإِعْدَادِهَا قَالَ سبحان قال صلى الله عليه وسلم من بنى مسجدا لله كم كمفحص قطعة أو أصغر بنى الله له بيت في الجنة. so then the sheikh he says he defines المساجد and he says المساجد and he says that its meaning and what's intended by this word is that it is the places of sujood, where the places of prostration and land or a piece of land which people pray upon. This is what is meant. And he says, it is the most beloved pieces of land to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah azza wa jal. And, and also it's, and, and people are encouraged and it's come as an encouragement to the people in many places in the hadith, uh, uh, with regards to building masajid and you know um, building them and setting them up and and you know uh, all that is connected to building a masjid. And then the evidence is given here. Uh, the Sheikh he brings a hadith with regards to what he said. He says, "Qala sallallahu alaihi wasallam." He said that uh, the rough translation of the hadith that the messenger of Allah. Allah said, whoever builds a mosque for the sake of Allah, like a sparrow's nest for Allah, or even smaller than that, Allah will build for him a house in paradise. So you can see where the encouragements come from. And this is a, is a great encouragement for us to, to do this. And the reward is great as well, as you can see. Alhamdulillah. So then the Shaykh continues and he says, Yaqul Allah. إنما يأمر مساجد الله من آمن بالله واليوم الآخر والمراد بالإمارة الإمارة الحسية والمعنوية إمارتها بالتين وما تحتاج إليه حتى تأوي المصلين وتظلمهم من حر وتظل أفوا سدرون ودا وتظلهم من الحر وتكنهم من البرد وإمارتها بالإبادة بالصلاة وتلاوة القرآن وذكر الله عز وجل وتطلق المساجد ويراد بها عداء السجود السبعة وهي الجبهة والأنف واليدان والركبتان والرؤوس القدمين لأنها تسجد لله والآية تشتمل المعنيين وأن المساجد أي البقاء التي يصلى فيها وعضاء السجود لله عز وجل. so then the sheikh mentions he says Allah says إنما يأمر مساجد الله من آمن بالله واليوم الآخر. so he brings an ayah so let's go there. سورة 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 التوبة verse eighteen the mosques of Allah shall be maintained only by those who believe in Allah and the last day perform a salat ikam al salat and give zakat and fear none but Allah. It is they who are expected to be on true guidance. So that's the whole ayah that we read. So then the shaykh, he says, and the intention with regards to the word uh, imara or uh, ma maintained, 
here in the in that context it is to do with the actual um uh, ma- maintenance of for example the building what's in it its walls and other than it and uh, for uh, the uh, worshipers the, the congregation and the sheikh brings some other examples for example that um for example the masjid itself in its physicality it uh, gives shade um uh, from the heat uh Uh, and gives shade and protection to the people from, for example, even the rain, for example, in this country, in England, for example, protects them. Uh, and uh, protects them from the cold as well, like in this country. And in the hotter countries, protects them and gives them shade, the walls and the masjid itself inside, yeah. Uh, and also, the sheikh says, from the other point of view, is from the, um, uh, from the, uh, 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 from the, the meanings that we can take. So from the spiritual side of it, which is, uh, in terms of, uh, the congregation actually worshipping inside the masjid so they're worshipping you know they pray the salat uh, the prayers uh, they um, read the quran they recite the quran they they remember allah they do the tasbih and they do the dhikr of allah so he explains it as that and then he also says that the meaning of al masajid also was in, intended by it is the parts of uh, of the body that are related to sujood so the seven as we know there's seven uh, parts of our bodies that are connected to when we make prostration so the sheikh he tells us what they are he says they are your forehead your nose your two hands your two knees uh, your uh, uh, and the and the front or the the front parts of your feet because when you go down in the uh, in the prostration it's not all of your like the sole of your foot it's the front parts of your feet you know where your uh, toes are connected to that part and they're touching the ground all of this when you if you can picture yourself now imagine yourself in prostration you know that all of these uh, parts of the body are touching the ground and if they're not well they should be because it's uh, these are the pillars of the prayer and uh, if you if you don't meet that criteria your your prayer is not accepted so uh, it's always a good reminder alhamdulillah so then um the sheikh he says all of this it encompasses and covers uh, it covers both of the meanings when in the quran ayah where we already read earlier on wa anna al masajid wa anna al masajid that it covers these two meanings that the sheikh explained in this paragraph so it is a patch of land a piece of land or a place where people pray and also at the same time it is those parts those seven parts of our bodies that when we go into prostration they are touching the ground for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of course only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so let's continue so then uh, the sheikh just mentions here, he says uh, the original piece of uh, uh, text from the book he says faman sarafa shay'an minha li ghayri Allah fa huwa mushrikun kafirun wa dalilu qawlu ta'ala wa man yad'u wa man yad'u ma Allah ilahan akhar um there's this bit is missing. La, uh, yeah, la burhana lahu bihi fa inna ma hisabuhu wa inda rabbihi innahu la yuflihul kafirun. So let's just read that because that's at the top of the page and then we'll carry on from where we left off. So then the Sheikh mentioned, he says, so whoever um, does any of these actions are related to worship for anybody else, then he is a mushrik, he's a kafir, he's disbelieved in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he leaves the fold of Islam. So then the Sheikh mentions an ayah from Surah Al-Mu'minun, so we should read the translation of that, inshallah, the meaning of it. Uh, and whoever invokes or, so and whoever invokes or worships besides Allah any other ilah God of whom he has no proof, then his reckoning is only with his Lord. Surely Al Kafirun, the disbelievers in Allah and in the oneness of Allah, polytheists, pagans, idolaters, etc., will not be successful. So uh there's the evidence for that, but we'll, we'll come back. To, I think the, the Sheikh will come back to that uh, towards the end of the bottom of the page. So then the Sheikh he begins explaining. So he says, "Fala tadu malai ahada." He says, "La tajalu hadi al masajid wa hadi al biqa mahallan li shirki wa da'wat wa da'wat ghayr Allah, bal yajibu an tatahar al masjid min al shirki, fala yakun fiha qabur qabur, wala yakun fiha du'a li ghayr Allahi." وَلَا يَكُونُ فِيهَا بِدْعٌ وَلَا يَكُونُ فِيهَا بِدْعٌ وَمُحْدَثَاتٌ وَحَلَقَاتٌ صُوفِيَّةٌ مُبْتَدِعَةٌ 
so the Shaykh he says, so he's continuing from the other Quran ayah and the other page. Yeah. فلا تدوم الله أحدا. So that's the ending of the 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 last the latter part of the ayah. And he says, he says, what does it mean? He says, don't you know create, uh, don't create these masjids or don't make these masjids a place for shirk, for uh, polytheism. Don't make these places of worship for polytheism, and and supplicating to other than Allah. Rather, it's obligatory that we purify these masajid, these places of worship from shirk. They should be purified from shirk. So there isn't in these masajid graves and there isn't inside them uh, what goes on in terms of supplicating to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And likewise, there isn't, um, uh, for example, uh, religious innovations going on, bid'ah and uh, whether they are uh, people spreading the thoughts, these, um, um, uh, let's say, these thoughts of bid'ah, or whether they actually are carrying them out, and that's the difference between bid'ah and muhdathat, because bid'ah is somebody is, um, you know, sharing false knowledge, so they they sharing the knowledge of these innovations, as in to perform them, but the ones who perform them, that's called muhdathat. So. Uh, none of these religious innovations, ideologies being spread, nor being actually acted out, and no other uh, uh, things going on within the masjid that have no evidence for it from the Quran and the authentic Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu and the Khulafa Rashidin. So then the Shaykh he continues and he says, "Yajibu an tutahhar al masjid an al bid'i wa shirki wal maasi." لأنها لله عز وجل فلا يكون فيها إلا ما يرضي الله عز وجل فلا تدعم الله أحدا في هذه المساجد أو تستخدموا أعداءكم بالسجود لغير الله عز وجل لأن هذا شرك أكبر كالذي يسجد للسنم أو للقبر أو يسجد للوثن فهذا يسجد لغير الله عز وجل سيدنا الشيخ سيدنا الشيخ سيدنا الشيخ سيدنا الشيخ سيدنا الشيخ سيدنا the mosques are purified from religious innovations, polytheism, and disobedience, because it because the masjid, the masjid, the mosques are for Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So the so there isn't in them, for example, other than that which pleases Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So everything that goes on within a masjid, it should be that which pleases Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So so then the Sheikh says, so don't supplicate and call upon other than Allah. Don't don't call anybody else along with alongside Allah in in his massage in in his mosques in his masajid or uh, make use of your body when you're going to prostrate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that it should only be for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not anybody else prostration because it's a type of worship is only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do not prostrate to anybody else because this is shirk otherwise, and it's shirk akbar, the great, the, the greater shirk which takes you out of the fold of Islam. Just like where people where they prostrate to idols and they prostrate to graves and they prostrate to anything else that resembles that. He says this. So it says because he said the Sheikh says for the yes you do and so this person in this description he is uh, prostrating to other than Allah subhanahu wa taala, which is a greater shirk, right? And that takes you out of the fold of Islam as we're aware. So then the Shaykh says, "Ashahidu fi qawlihi fala tadum Allahi ahda amrun bi ikhlas wa du'a lahum wahda." So then the Shaykh says, "The point in this in Allah's speech, Subhanahu wa Taala, Allah's speech, fala tadum Allahi ahda." So don't call uh, upon other uh, with Allah uh, uh, other people. Don't call you know alongside Allah other people. Uh, supplicate to other or worship to uh, worship other peoples besides Allah or alongside Allah then the, he said the shaykh says it's a command it's to do it's a command of ikhlas it's the command of sincerity yeah uh, and and pure you know purely worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone 100% worship for Allah and that is tawhid the tawhid of Allah that you're not sharing uh, your worship uh, uh, you're sharing worship and uh, you know worshiping or sharing parts of it with other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is shirk then 
So then the Sheikh says, وَقَوْلُهُ أَحَدًا يَعُمُّ كُلُّ مَدْعُ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ سَوَا إِنْ كَانَ مَلَكًا أَوْ نَبِيًّا أَوْ وَلِيًّا أَوْ شَجَرًا أَوْ حَجَرًا يَعُمُّ كُلُّ مَنْ دُوِيَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ يَزَوَجَلْ فَإِنَّهُ يَكُونُ شِرْكًا أَكْبَرًا So then uh, the Sheikh, he gives us a benefit and gives a further explanation of that ayah. He says, what does أَحَدًا mean in this ayah? فَلَا تَدْعُ, فلا تدعو مَ اللَّهِ أَحَدًا So what does أَحَدًا mean? He says, أَحَدًا, the way it's mentioned here, it, it covers everything, everything that's called to, anything that you call to, that's what it's referring to. Anything that you call to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's what it is. Whether that is an angel, or a prophet, or a messenger, um, uh, a wali of Allah, or a tree, or a stone, and other than that. Anything that's supplicated to, it covers other than Allah, then that's what that means. And the Sheikh mentions it here. And so therefore, whoever does that, falls into Shirk Akbar, as the Sheikh explained earlier. So then we're going on to uh, a dua as well. So uh, we, we will mention, uh, the Sheikh is going to break down dua in more detail. So he says, just let's just read this top bit where we left off here. So the Sheikh says, says Wa fil hadith, a dua wa mukhul ibadah. Wa dalilu qawluhu ta'ala wa qala rabbukum mudu'uni astajib lakum inna alladhina yastakbiruna an ibadati sayadkhuluna jahannam adakhirin. Surah Tugafir. So we'll come back to that in a second. But, uh, the Sheikh is going to go, I think we'll go into it here in the next page. So the Sheikh, he says, Wa qala rabbukum. All right, okay, good. So this is a perfect time to go through the ayah. So uh, the ayah that the Sheikh mentioned here, Wa qala rabbukum mudu'uni astajib lakum. That is Surah Ghafir. Let's read the whole ayah. Say, call you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the believers upon or invoke Allah making your worship pure for him alone by worshipping none but him and by doing religious deeds sincerely for Allah's sake only and not to show off and not to set up rivals with him in worship however much the disbelievers in the oneness of Allah may hate it that's the whole ayah yeah, that we read there So, and then uh, the Sheikh mentions the hadith as well just where we mentioned uh, ad-du'a al mukhul ibadah that ad-du'a um, it is it is the, the greatest form of worship. It is the greatest form of worship. And the, uh, the Sheikh will explain this. So, so the Sheikh is breaking down the ayah that we just read. وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ مُدُعُونِ يَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ The ayah to the end of it. He says, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ He says, i.e. أَمَرَكُمْ رَبُّكُمْ وَقَالَ دُعُونِ يَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ أَمَرَ بِدُعَاءِ سُبْحَانُهُ وَوَعَدَ بِالْإِسْتِجَابَ وَهَذَا مِنْ كَرْمِهِ سُبْحَانُهُ وَتَعَالَى لِأَنَّهُ غَنِيٌّ غَنِيٌّ عَنْ دُعَائِنَا وَلَكِنَّنَا مُحْتَاجُونَ لِدُعَائِهِ سُبْحَانُهُ وَتَعَالَى فَهُوَ يَأْمُرُنَا بِمَا نَحْتَاجُ إِلَيْهِ وَبِمَا يُصْلِحُنَا وَهُوَ سُبْحَانُهُ يَغْضَبْ إِذَا تَرَكْتَ سُؤَالَهُ بَيْنَمَا الْمَخْلُوقَ يَغْضَبْ إِذَا سَأَلْتَهُ وَلِهَذَا يَقُولُ الشَّاعِر so uh, just let's uh, uh, translate that. So then the Sheikh says, what does waqala uh, rabbukum in this ayah mean? He says, i.e. that uh, I command you, that your Lord commands you. And he says, ud'uni astajib lakum, um, supplicate to me, make dua to me, ask me, yeah, that I may answer you, answer your dua. So the Sheikh, he says, it's a, it's a command of, of making dua to subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah... Likewise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises that he will answer the dua of the one who's making it. And this is from his generosity subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not in need of our supplication, but we are in need of supplicating to him subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he commanded us with that which we are in need of and in that which rectifies our affairs and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he, he becomes angry Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes angry if you do not ask him whereas the creation like the humankind and the jinn or the, let's just use our example the humankind humankind or mankind gets angry when you ask him something is he gets angry. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gets angry when you don't ask him, but the person like us, for example, the, from one of the creation, if somebody asks us for something, we're likely to get angry. <laughs> we're likely to get angry, which is true. <laughs> the Shaykh says, 
That's why the the poet said this. So a poet said this. He said, "Allahu yaghdabu in tarakta su'alahu wa bani Adam hina yusalu yaghdabu." فَلَوْ سُئِلَ النَّاسُ التُّرَابَ لَأَوْشَكُ إِذَا قِيلَ هَاتُ أَنْ يَمُلُّ وَيَمْنَعُ So basically what that the poet said here, is what the Sheikh mentioned, but he obviously uh, he said it in, in poetry, he says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, gets angry uh, if you leave off asking him and, and asking him. So Allah gets angry when you leave off asking him for something. And Bani Adam, the children of Adam, when he is asked, he gets angry. So, so if he, so if the people are asked uh, for dust, merely dust, they complain. So, so that's what's being said here. So you can see the co- contrast, the uh, uh, comparison and contrast between the difference between Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and His creation. So when Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is not asked. It angers him that his creation are not asking him for their needs. But when one of the creation are asked by another member of the creation, when another person asks another person, he gets angry and he starts complaining. Even if it's dust, if you ask him for dust, something that's just dust, he has nothing to get angry. So it shows you the, the difference here. And so it's important for us to remember that we should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, uh, you know, and, and not refrain from that because a person who doesn't ask uh, uh, doesn't ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, in terms of his needs, his requirements he doesn't turn to Allah it's a type of arrogance we should avoid that so the shaykh he says so he says he says the people of three categories فَالنَّاسُ أَقْسَامُ الثَّلَاثَ أَقْسَامُ ثَلَاثَةٍ الْأَوَّلُ مَنْ لَا يَدْعُ اللَّهِ أَصْلًا فَيَكُونُ مُسْتَكْبِرًا عَنْ إِبَادَةِ اللَّهِ So the first type, the one who doesn't ask Allah at all, doesn't ask Allah for anything at all, this one is being arrogant, is arrogant, and he's arrogant of the uh, of, of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and asking him. Athani, second type, مَنْ يَدْعُ اللَّهِ وَلَكِنْ يَدْعُ مَعْهُ غَيْرَهُ فَيَكُونُ مُشْرِكًا Secondly, the one who asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but he also asks other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. So this one is a mushrik, a polytheist. A thalith, and thirdly, the third type, man yadu Allah mukhlisan lahu dua, fahada huwa al-muwahid. And the third type of person is the one who asks Allah sincerely, 100%, only asking Allah uh, with regards to supplication, making supplication to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, and not sharing any partners in worship, and in that dua, this is the muwahid, the one who's upon the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So then, the shaykh, he says, فِي الْحَدِيثَ النَّبِي صلى الله عليه وسلم قَالَ أَدْعَى مُخُ الْإِبَادَةِ وَفِي رِوَايَةِ الدُّعَى هُوَ الْإِبَادَةِ فَهَذَا يَدُلُّ عَلَىٰ عَظِيمُ الدُّعَى وَهَذَا يَدُلُّ عَلَىٰ عَظِيمُ الدُّعَى um, وَأَنَّهُ أَعْدَمَ نُوَى الْإِبَادَةِ لِأَنَّ الرَّسُولَ صلى الله عليه وسلم قال مُخُ الْإِبَادَةِ So then the Shaykh he says in the hadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم uh, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said that supplication or dua it is uh, the head of the it said the top is the, is, the, is the greatest type of ibadah and in another narration Ad-du'a huwa al-ibadah. And in another narration, uh, Ad-du'a, it is worship. That Ad-du'a is a form of worship. The Shaykh says, and this demonstrates to us the the magnificence of supplication Ad-du'a. And that it is from the greatest types of worship. Because the Prophet Wasallam or the Messenger Wasallam he said, Mukha al-ibadah. That is at the top, it's the head, it's at the top, it's the top, yeah? It's the most... Mm, uh, a magnificent or type of ibadah or the greatest type of ibadah and then the shaykh also mentions here he says wa fi riwayat wa fi riwayatin ad-du'a huwa al-ibadah wa riwayat thaniya asah min riwayat ad-du'a mukha al-ibadah wal ma'na wahid so then the shaykh just gives a bit of an explanation about these um narrations the two that we mentioned and he says that the second narration that we mentioned ad-du'a 
well, ibadah is the more correct one out of the two. But if we look at both of them, they carry the same meaning. That's why he's mentioned to us here. Alhamdulillah. So let's continue. He says, فَالْحَدِيثِ بِرِوَايَتَيْهِ يُبَيِّنُ عِذَمَ الدُّعَى وَأَنَّهُ هُوَ النَّوْعُ لَأَعْظَمْ مِنْ أَنْوَالِ لِبَادَةً كَمَا قَالَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ الْحَجْ عَرَفَةً بِمَعْنَى أَنَّ الْوُقُوفَ أَنَّ الْوُقُوفَ بِعَرَفَةً فِي الْحَجِّ هُوَ الرُّكْنُ الْأَعْظَمُ مِنْ أَرْكَانِ الْحَجِّ وَلَيْسَ مَعْنَاهُ أَنَّ الْحَجْ كُلَّهُ هُوَ عَرَفَةً ولكن الوقوف ولكن الوقوف بعرفته هو عظم أركان الحج كذلك ليست الإبادة محصورة في الدعاء ولكن الدعاء هو عظم نوعها ولهذا قال الدعاء هو الإبادة من باب تعظيم الدعاء وبيان مكانته. so then the sheikh he says so in in the hadith he says so the hadith with both of its narrations it demonstrates and clarifies to us the 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 magnificence of supplication and dua the greatness of it and uh, it is a type it is the greatest types of of worship as the prophet sallallahu said in an, in another example al hajj the pilgrimage the major pilgrimage al hajj is arafa al hajj arafa the sheikh says what does that mean meaning that uh, staying upon arafa which is part of hajj uh, it it is from the greatest parts and pillars of hajj but it doesn't mean that um that arafa itself is hajj only it doesn't mean that it's just clarifying the greater the the greatest pillar here or what's uh, more magnificent and greater in that in that situation uh and the sheikh says so um stopping at arafa it is from the greatest pillars of hajj like that just help us understand the situation here and like that it's not uh, and like that al ibada isn't the worship isn't constrained or restricted to dua only but a dua supplication it is the greatest types of ibada so uh, that's been made clear there alhamdulillah so the sheikh says and that's why he he said, "Adua hu alibada." That's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "Adua hu alibada." That dua, it is, it is ibadah worship, meaning that it is from the greatest types of worship, and that worship isn't only dua. Yep, we understand that. Alhamdulillah, and it's from from the perspective of, uh, you know, the greatness of dua and clarif and clarifying its position, its great position. Yeah. So then the Shaykh continues and he says, ثم ذكر الشيخ رحمه الله أدل أدلة أنواع الإبادة التي ذكرها وهي الخوف والرجاء والتوكل والرغبة والرهبة والخشوع والخشية والإنابة والاستيانة والاستيادة والذبح والنذر وغير ذلك من أنواع الإبادة التي أمر الله بها كلها لله فقال رحمه الله الخوف نوع من أنواع الإبادة وهو إبادة قلبية وكذلك الخوف والخشية والرغبة والرهبة والرجاء والتوكل كل هذه إبادة إبادات قلبية. so we we'll just read that last paragraph and then we finish الحمد لله. so then the sheikh says and then the sheikh he may Allah mercy upon him mentions uh, uh, evidence with regards to um, the types of worship which he mentioned and they are Al-Khawf, fear, and hope, and trust, and uh, the desire to do uh, that which is good and what Allah has commanded you with. Al-Rahbah, uh, having fear from not doing what you've been commanded with and staying away from the prohibitions, for example. Uh, Al-Khushu, tranquility. Uh, Al-Khashya, uh, fear as well. Uh, Al-Inaba, um, wal-isti'ana, wal-isti'adha, wal-dhab, wal-nadhar, which we mentioned earlier as well. So seeking aid from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, seeking help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, sacrificing for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, uh, making oath with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and other than that from the types of worship which Allah has commanded us with, all of that. So, so then it moves on to Al-Khawf. So then what the Shaykh is going to do here, we'll do this in the next lesson, is the Shaykh is going to explain to us all these different types he's mentioned here. So he's going to break down what Al-Khawf actually means, what Raja means, what Tawakkul means, what Raghba, to the end of what we just read in that paragraph. And inshallah, uh, with the last permission, we will continue that 
uh, next week in a new lesson with Allah Ta'ala. Uh, so we'll conclude there. Subhanakullah wa bihamdik ashadu an la ilaha ilant wa astaghfiruka wa tubi ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.